the movies on the weekend, I saw the film The Man about the landing on the moon. You haven't seen that? It's fairly new, Neil Armstrong. <coughs> One of the things, um, because when you're a teacher, you always climb on. The teachers in the room will know what I'm talking about. You always, you, you see something, you think, oh, that'd be great. When I was a classroom teacher, I used to be forever cutting things out of the newspaper that shows my age. Um, and take it into to my classes, or I'd watch something, I think, oh, that'd be great for my students. So I was watching the man, and right toward the end, they had um, the, the, the old TV screen, now uh, talking 1969. Um, no, I don't remember the landing on the moon. <laughs> um, all the siblings do. Um, and there was President Kennedy, and he said, we choose to do this, the space exploration, we choose to do this not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And I thought, oh, that's the language immersion program. <laughs> no, I don't mean to say that to, to scare you or to put you off, but we choose to do this, to take this approach, because it is challenging, it will stretch you, it is hard, it will be hard. Um, but there's all the benefits that come from having a go at something that you think, oh, maybe I can't do this, but actually you can. And that, that notion of, um, of diving in and really immersing yourself in something and being successful at that at the end. So really, that's all I was going to say about that. And I'm passing to Ricky Stanton Cook, who is our um, English and Language Head Department. Thanks, Kathy. Um, just before I get started, I probably won't move much away from here because we're filming tonight's presentation for those parents who aren't able to make it. Um, as Kathy said, I'm Ricky Stanton Cook, so I look after English and language here at the college. Um, and I'll just take a few seconds to introduce the rest of our language immersion team. So we have Laura Chapman with us. You might know Laura as a Beck boy there, but she's also one of our French teachers and has been very involved in this process. And also Dervla Gardner. So Dervla will actually be the teacher who is teaching her students if they elect to study French immersion next year. So tonight really is a little bit about sharing a little more about what the program is and actually explaining that to you. Um, and also really talking about the benefits. And we're all very passionate and believe very strongly in this approach. Um, and hopefully, hopefully that's what comes across this evening. Okay, so I'll start a little bit with what language immersion actually is. Um, I may tonight use the term uh, CLIL or something that stands for Content and Language Integrated Learning uh, this evening, which is just another way of explaining language immersion. It's actually an internationally recognised approach to teaching and learning languages. And in, a set, um, in essence, what it really means is that the students are not only studying language in a classroom and focusing on French just in their French class, but it gives them an opportunity to be immersed, hence the, the term immersion, um, and learn language in a more natural setting. So at our school, the way that will operate would be that students will select to study French, as Britt has mentioned, and in that subject, they would be exposed to grammar and um, instruction around the actual language itself. But they would also then study religious education and the content and curriculum of that subject in the French language. Um, and you may already be thinking, as Kathy mentioned, that does sound very challenging, and it certainly is, but it's also very rewarding as well. Uh, the idea as well behind language emerging is that as students, and I'll speak more about this um, as I was moving a bit further into the presentation, but as students learn the language, the language becomes um, not quite forgotten, but almost less of a focus because it becomes more natural to them. And so the learning of the content improves as that language um, learning improves as well. I will just show, show you a short little film um, video that sums this up visually. The internet is often affected by the rain, so hopefully thing is crossed. Okay, while that's being if it hasn't quite um, picked up, um, I, I would like to talk a bit more about the benefits tonight of learning immersion. Um, I suppose that for a long time, we can probably go.
integrating the learning within uh, the subject in our case that would be religious education and I'll talk a little bit more later about what that will actually look like in our context. Um, in terms of what the benefits are of, of the language immersion program and why someone might want to be involved in this, um, as I was saying before, sometimes, or I suppose it for a long time, people have looked at language and its benefits and focused primarily on two things. So one being the notion that it provides even better opportunities to communicate when we travel, and of course that is an undeniable benefit. Um, and secondly, employability, which um, is really something that we can't ignore. Is that there's a lot of research around that, but that's will a little bit later on. But what we wanted to focus on tonight is that there are far more significant benefits even just than those two things. Um, and probably the real focus, and what's come out of a lot of research around clear or immersion, is that students' cognitive abilities, their organisation abilities, their creative and critical thinking skills are significantly improved as a consequence, and that this then has really positive repercussions for their learning in other subjects and for themselves as a learner as well. So this little uh, image here of the iceberg is something that we thought we'd use as a bit of a visual representation of um, this notion that when someone studies a language, what is often visible are these things here. Uh, we might be able to see them speaking or using the language, or actually being able to read, write, and communicate in the language, but often what's happening is there are far more uh, benefits or things happening beneath the surface. Um, and this is really what makes immersion such a powerful approach to learning a language in particular. Um, I know there's a lot of information on this slide, and we've talked about this for a very long time. We've condensed um, it down to one slide, but in the brochures that you have on the chairs this evening, and remember up the back of this one, uh, we've outlined a whole range of benefits to this immersion approach. Um, the list up the top really talks about some of the things that uh, are evidence based, but also that we've witnessed um, and we've heard anecdotally from students in other schools. We've visited a school called the Plenty School in Toowoomba. It's a school of similar size, Catholic girls, and um, girls school. Um, and we had a, a really good opportunity as a team to watch classes there, but also to talk to students. Uh, and a lot of the things that they mentioned were on the list and, and have actually been um, reiterated in the research. So it was interesting because the first one that we came across is about it increasing your confidence and that the enrichment that comes from that. And these girls spoke incredibly confidently and articulately about what they have gained this approach to their, to their studies. Um, enhanced listening and thinking skills that of course are not just beneficial for the study of language, but then uh, have flow of flow and effects into other subjects of course. Um, the girls, this, this, this one here, improved study skills, self-discipline motivation is probably the one I think that the girls at this school spoke about the most. Many of them talked about how they had originally not been, not necessarily been the most organised students although some of course naturally were, but some of them weren't, but they felt that in doing an immersion program, they really developed very strong organisational skills and study skills that they then transferred into some of the subjects, and that they really had to rely on some internal motivation, and that of course they also transferred. Um, we, we really see one of significant benefits as mental flexibility and creative and critical thinking and problem solving skills. Um, one of the things that the research has suggested is that students who actually study two languages, in particular immersion work, a content language integrated approach, even in science, can have improved hypothesis um, and the ability to hypothesize. Um, and of course, this final one about understanding language in the way it works means that it not only improves the understanding of the French language, as in our case, but also the English language, which then, of course, has a flow of effect into the English studies as well. Um, I, I did also want to mention that this is something else we've, that probably Laura has been particularly interested in because um, of her background in, in VET as well, but the Foundation for Young Australians has done some research um, and they've looked at what future employees are looking at in terms of their of students in, in current society. And for our students, what they've said in their words are that the future of work is no longer a linear line. In fact, it's a jungle gym rather than a ladder. And so employers are really looking for transferable skills now. And in their research, they've identified that in the top four things that they're looking for, three of them come out of programs such as this. The second thing that the, 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 um, yeah, the second thing that's been identified as an important quality that employers are now looking for is bilingual skills. Um, and I think probably in Australia we've, we've lagged a little bit in that area, but if you look globally at uh, bilingual speaking skills, that, that there is a, a huge 
global focus on that, especially as people are moving more around, um, then uh, employees are actually looking for people who can have a greater sense of cultural awareness, um, and that it goes beyond just the language they're learning. It doesn't necessarily matter whether it's a study of German or Mandarin or Japanese or French, but the benefits that come from the learning of the language outweigh whatever the language in fact is. Um, the other two things that make the top four are critical thinking and creativity as well. Um, I'll hand over for, uh, to Derla, um, who's going to talk a little bit more about, so we, like I mentioned before, we have the opportunity to give some uh, lessons and speak to some students at the Glenny School. Um, and I suppose what we were incredibly impressed with was the students' ability to comprehend the lesson and participate in the lesson. Um, I can fully understand that it can be hard to even imagine what it would be like if you could if you've never learned another language to sit in a class and then religious education curriculum in French, um, and I myself have studied Italian when I was at school, but I don't actually speak French. Um, I was really impressed, and then really, to be honest, quite amazed that these students, grade eight students, could sit and learn this language and interact and engage more fully. So Derva's going to talk a little bit more about the students' perspective of learning in French immersion. Okay, so really on um, Thursday we had a, a class. It was the first class, and we said we'll we, we introduce it to our grade nine students. Um, these grade nine students would have the same ability as the grade eights because they would have only had one term of French done from last year. Um, so if you'd like to listen to their testimonies, we'll be talking a bit about it. And they have no idea, they're just going to do a normal French class on Thursday and to commit this lesson. So by the way, we're doing the, the templates in French. Um, here we go, and we had a fantastic lesson. So um, we will watch the lesson in a few minutes, but we just want to hear um, the testimonies first of all.
something that, you know, you, you don't even realise you're doing it, you know, so something that, that becomes very, very easy as time goes on. Um, and also in Ireland, it's, it's, it's very, very important for students to continue the Irish language and they would, they would choose to study science in Irish and give them extra points if they wanted to go on to medicine. They would actually choose to do some subjects in Irish. Um, I'm saying that as well, I think we met a class pupil there on Saturday and she's now doing engineering in the UQ. And she came up to me and she said, I really have regrets that I didn't do French when I was in St. John Fisher. And the reason being is because um, her lecturer has asked her, you know, to go on to an exchange program in year three, in, um, in her third year in, in um, university of engineering. And he's asked her if she would like to go to France or Spain or Italy or Ireland. And she has chosen Ireland because it's an English speaking country. But she said to me, I really regret not doing French because he told me that I'm more employable, you know, if I study engineering in French, if I could have done that. Um, and it's just very, very interesting that she said that to me because um, if you can go to, you know, a university and study engineering in French, you know, um, friends of mine would have studied business in French. And it's kind of very, very normal progression. So these students really, um, they came into the lesson uh, very, very engaged and really took it on. And within five minutes, they were, they were totally immersed. It's a pity you didn't get to see the video, but um, I just found they really, really got into it very, very quickly. So that way, you will see it. And we, yeah, we should be able to, you know, to work with the show on this and on part of the lesson that took the tour because yes. as well. Okay. Thanks, Tabitha. Well, um, we're also going to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, who should actually study this subject, um, whether it's the right fit for your, do your daughter. Um, and I suppose, really, what, what we would um, suggest, firstly, if um, a student at the moment in grade seven is achieving an A, and that's combined with an actual love of life at the subject, and we really strongly encourage them to take this approach um, and to choose this as an option for studying the language next year, especially if they're already contemplating studying French in grade eight. Um, do they have to be achieving A and A? Not necessarily, um, but we would really recommend that they would be studying, that they would be achieving sorry, a B in grade seven in French. But really more importantly, even then the results that they're achieving are those things that they are organised, or if they're not extremely, um, extremely organised, those skills will develop furthermore. Um, but also that they have an aim for effort, that they perceive themselves as someone who's prepared to put the effort in um, and to challenge themselves, as Kathy mentioned earlier. Um, we'll talk a little bit later also about how you can be able to support your daughter and how we would plan to do that as well um, if they choose this pathway. Um, we pop this slide in there, I suppose, and this very much aligns with what Kathy started talking about at the beginning of this presentation, is that um, I suppose it's really a choice between sticking with your comfort zone um, and what's comfortable, and then choosing that option of challenging getting out of your comfort zone. Um, there are just there are some really enormous opportunities there for growth, not just as a student in terms of academic performance, but also as a learner to improve learning and, and those skills. Um, will it be hard? Yes, it will be hard, but it, will, it is the sort of thing that from the discussions we've had with students who've been involved in it, the evidence and research around it, that is highly, as I've said, beneficial to, to the girls. So what will it actually look like here at St John Fisher? Um, as uh, Rick mentioned, if the students choose the immersion program as an option, then what they will be doing is studying their religious education class, as they, as other students would be, at five one-hour lessons per cycle across 10 days. But of course, they'd be studying that in the French language. And the expectation is that if they select that option, that they would also study French for semester one and semester two of grade eight. Uh, and they would study that for four one-hour lessons per cycle. And I suppose one of the significant advantages for the learning of the language itself is that this provides them with nine exposures. So almost every day they are working in, speaking in, listening to the French language, which of course, naturally, has really positive re repercussions for the development of their French itself. So do we actually teach the same content as religious education? Yes, we do. We follow the Brisbane Catholic Education Religious Education Guidelines. Um, and with the difference being that some of the assignments and exams will be slightly altered. Because Derwood will be the teacher teaching this 
this next year, I'll hand over her to talk a little bit more about the content and curriculum and then what lessons will actually look like as well. Okay. So, starting to hear this. So, it's very, very similar. There's nothing really changing from the not doing anything different to the normal, the normal religion class. So, if you look at uh, term one, you look at the very Christian church. What that would look like for our students in, um, in the religious, in the, in the immersion program, is they will have to do something like um, annotate uh, a drawing, a painting. So they will have to analyze the painting of Pentecost, what's it mean to them, and retell them the story of Pentecost in their own words. That's very, very similar. It's exactly what the rest of the class will be doing. So nothing different to the rest of the classes. If you look at topic two, it's about the covenant. So students will choose uh, a prophet, whether they choose Moses or Abraham or David, and they will choose uh, to, to um, present a multiple representation based on the prophet of their choice. And again, it's, it's, it aligns with the rest of the class. So with that, it's great for their speaking, it's great for their presentation, the pronunciation, they will have a script with them, and it will be wonderful for, for their French and also the content of their religious um, curriculum. With topic three, movers and shakers, it's really about the people who rock the church um, and who help the church and so we'll probably veer them in, in the direction of St. Uh, St. John of Arc. Uh, so we can there's a lot of French saints, a lot of French history there as well. And it also aligns with the history curriculum as well. So we will be uh, you know uh, joining the two together and we in, in this term here the students choose they actually do a stained glass image of a saint of their choice and they and they speak about that stained glass image and what the symbols represent. So this is what they do in English, so it's very, very easy to do in French as well. So nothing is difficult for our students. And the last topic is Mission Matters, and that's really all about um, how our Catholic social teachings are incorporated into the charities. So again, we can bring our students towards the Salvation Army, the Croix de Rouge, the uh, uh, Submissive the Pole charities, and it's basically how um, our teachings align with um, the charities. And again, students, it's very, very visual, they create a brochure and they, um, it's, it's, it's all, you know, very, very descriptive. So there's nothing different, so I think a lot of parents would be very concerned, is so my daughter, uh, will, she, will she lose a little bit of religion, will she not do as much as the rest of the students, will she fall behind, that's not going to be the case at all. She's doing exactly the same as the rest of the classes, which is just doing the French. So, um, it's, yeah, that's really where we're going, it's just not really, really different. And I suppose um, it's not content heavy, I suppose, in grade 8, as years ago, I guess, it's a bit more difficult. Um, and that leads into um, the class, hopefully you'll see. I have a background, When you watch this, you'll just see me pointing constantly to visuals. Um, I didn't go to English at all. Um, the students, and this is what we have to do, we have to be very, very strict with ourselves when, when they come into class, they're immersed in the French lesson. When I teach grammar, I have to revert a little bit to English because I have to explain, you know, why we use the past tense. And, but when I'm teaching religion and French, it's very, very different. It's totally in French. So you can just watch how the girls are going. We have a PowerPoint going on. We've got a few visuals, a lot of questions, a lot of repetition. Oops, adieu. We all know. Mm -hmm. Oui, il est Ok. C'est difficile de libérer des esclaves. Mm -hmm. Oui. Parce que le pharaon, est-ce qu'il est, qu est quelqu'un sympa ou méchant? Mm -hmm. Oui, le pharaon, il est très méchant, oui. Mm -hmm. Alors c'est quelque chose de très difficile de libérer des esclaves. C'est une autre mm -hmm. histoire. Oui. Il y a beaucoup 
la question de la bouche. Alors, ça c'est quel prix Quel numéro de demain On a la première, on a la deuxième, on a la troisième. Maintenant, c'est la... Oui, oui, la quatrième, peut-être. Très bien. Ici, il y a la tournée aujourd'hui. Il y a la tournée. Vous comprenez
Also, accessing the school Facebook page will be helpful because that's where we will post updates and some links to information. Uh, the school newsletter, of course. Uh, on the parent portal, we will upload the filmed version of tonight uh, for those parents who are unable to see it or will need to re-watch something. Um, and the other person that you might like to follow is Dr. Simone Smiler's Facebook page. Um, she's actually, actually a lecturer at the University of Queensland and she's very responsible for a lot of research in CLIL or immersion. Um, and she's quite active on her Facebook page and actually updating with information about that and providing links to useful research or information. So she's someone that we will be working closely with um, and would really suggest or encourage you to actually have a look at her uh, what she has to say on Facebook. Um, okay, I think that just about covers where you'll be able to access some information. So I'll open up if anyone has any questions and if you do, hopefully between the three of us we can answer those for you. Tonight. You said um, it's your expectation that they have to bridge to take this. Is it a mandatory? It is mandatory, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's so that they actually develop the uh, grammar and the vocabulary skills in their French subject. Because while they're in religious education, there's no focus on that necessarily. Of course, there's focus around the vocabulary for uh, the actual content, um, as Dover is doing a lot of in that, that lesson. But in terms of actually understanding, the grammar of, of the language, that's what the French reinforces in that French lesson. Yeah. Yes, so does that mean they take immersion program in French and they're in certain miles? So, yes, yeah, so it'll mean that they have, so because they can select two, they're going to make four in total. So if they do the uh, immersion program, then French will take up semester of one and then two, which is effectively two choices. And then and then they'll be able to, for the rest of the remainder of the year, choose one subject for semester one and one for semester two, or it could well be the same thing. Right. Yeah. So, so the immersion program will take the place of just RE, which is a core subject. Okay. Yeah, so they still have that other elective. Yeah. yeah. And sorry, yeah. Um, if they don't put the immersion program in grade eight, they have to pick that up in grade nine. Um, that's <laughs> I'm here to answer <laughs> those questions. <laughs>
they found that these students, and it was in one of the, there's something, I probably didn't get into it too much, but that these students actually found that initially, the actual learning in the French was very challenging and that it did require a lot of energy, but as they progressed through that, not only did their learning in the French improve, but many of them actually performed higher in their other subjects as well in the long, long term. Um, so it's not something that students go into and just immediately, necessarily in the first you know, week or two, just pick it up like that. It, you know, the honest truth is, yes, it does take time for them to build those skills. Um, the girls themselves, we also obviously spoke to the girls, they, they, they commented on that and you might yes. be able to feel Well, that's, they said the same thing. So they said initially they did find sort of there was a bit of a drop in their grades, but they found that the skills that they were learning in the immersion and the study skills helped them to improve in their other grades. So they all actually went up across the board in all of their other subjects. Because again, it's coming back to those transferable skills and teaching the girls to be a little bit more um, independent and self aligned on themselves. Whilst we're still here to support and we will do that in any way possible, it's teaching them those skills which are going to put them in a really good place for that senior. And those external exams that Britt spoke about, all of those sorts of things, the benefits are just you know, really great. And they noted the drop in, in um, social science studies that were in their in French language, so they initially found that hard. So, for example, if they were studying religious education, that it took them some time, the result if they were sitting on an A might have been a B, and that many of them said that by the end of the year, and again, this is from the girls themselves, said, oh, we can get our way back to an A quite quickly, and then felt a shift in our other subjects as well. So, um, yeah, as Laura says, it's sort of the, the other aspects of it that have been initially take a little more to kind of see their outcomes from that. Any other questions? Yeah, so a conversation maybe with Laura or Dover, um, who will be teaching her next year. 
Um, as Gerald said before, we're looking at starting up a language immersion supporters group of parents and all other schools operate something like this so that parents can get together um, and the students, of course, and build kind of a little bit of a network um, because, of course, it is something new, it's a very different approach to perhaps what we're used to. Um, and in the future, by the end of this year, we'll be looking at having, depending on um, a response, we'll be looking at another parent evening that, that delves a little bit further into it um, and that would most likely involve uh, Dr. Simone Smile, who I mentioned before. She often comes out to schools and actually delivers a mock lesson to parents in, in another language, her language is German. So, um, but as we said before, the language is what's um, not really <laughs> relevant, but it's actually having that experience and seeing uh, that, that in action in the so, unless you had anything else I need to add, so, um, really we'd just like to thank you all very much for coming out tonight um, and listening to us and we're hoping that if you do have any other questions, you're more than welcome to stay behind or send us an email or um, go down any of those other avenues I suggested previously. And I can actually show you where all the information is on our website, just so if you want to go home and do some cool reading tonight, <laughs> you'll know exactly where to go. Um, so, um, and we'll be updating this like we said, so if you just go to, um, so if we're on our home page, if you look in at the learning and teaching area, and then it's the language immersion.